The old Minnehaha County Courthouse was built in 1890 at the corner of Main Avenue and 6th Street. It was designed by Wallace Dow, regionally the most important architect of the day. Like many Dow-designed buildings, it was constructed mainly of Sioux quartzite stone, much of it quarried on site. The quarry pit became the basement and the building's foundation rests on the remaining ancient bedrock. The monumental clock tower stands 165 feet high. In 1890, it was the tallest structure between Chicago and Denver. The courthouse was designed and built to impress from the outside and the inside. When you come in the old courthouse museum, uh, you're coming into a 1890 Richardsonian Romanesque uh, courthouse. Uh, it's very grand, uh, really pretty spectacular architecture. You can see some of it around. You can see it in the detail of the woodwork, in the wrought iron stair railings, the original iron and wooden chairs still in the courtroom gallery and in the stained glass windows all around the building. The old courtroom is now a gathering place for public events like this noonday concert. But the building alone is not all there is to the museum. There are six exhibition galleries. Those galleries change every 18 to 24 months and we have a variety of different topics or subjects. One of the reasons for that is we have such a diverse collection. We have many more objects in the collection than we're able to display. The other Siouxland Heritage Museum is just a few blocks away from the old courthouse. This Queen Anne style house was also designed by Wallace Dow. It was built in 1889 for a well-to-do lawyer named Thomas McMartin. The McMartin family lived here for 20 years but theirs isn't the name most people remember. Senator Richard F. Pettigrew bought the house from the McMartin estate in 1911. Pettigrew was among the first settlers in Sioux Falls. He represented Dakota Territory in the U.S. Congress and after statehood became South Dakota's first U.S. Senator. Among many other things, Pettigrew was a traveler and a collector of things various and sometimes odd. Like these leg irons supposedly worn by Jack McCall when he was hanged for killing Wild Bill Hickok. There are Native American artifacts, oddities from the Orient, and genuine antiquities. Pettigrew had a lot of stuff. He also had enough money to remodel his house, so? In 1923, R.F. Pettigrew tore off the back porch and built a museum addition. Uh, two rooms, actually designed by an architect named Joseph Schwartz. And uh, when he died, he donated the home and museum to the city of Sioux Falls as a museum. It was his idea that there needed to be a museum and, and his collection, he wanted it to belong to the Sioux Falls community. And I think very much in, in that spirit, the museum continues to operate. And, is really perceived as sort of the center of the Cathedral Historic District in Sioux Falls and, and really a part of this uh, historic district in the community, but also the community as a whole. Visitors to the museum today will see a modern facility, but the spirit of the place has been preserved. We, we have one exhibit here at the Pedigree Museum today called the Cabinet of Curiosities, which is really intended to give the visitor a feel for what Pettigrew's museum was like in the 1920s. All the artifacts in it are things that Pettigrew collected. And uh, there's a wide variety of things in there. Today's visitors can also tour the Pettigrew home. That wasn't always the case. Until 1973, that's where the museum's curators lived. Now it's been preserved, updated, and in some areas restored. Not all of the furnishings belong to the Pettigrews, but some of them did. Either way, everything in the house today is period appropriate. About 9,000 people visit the Pettigrew Home and Museum every year. About 80,000 pass through the old courthouse museum annually. Admission to either of the Siouxland Heritage Museums is free and they are open seven days a week. Check the museum's website for information about hours and special programs.